Hi everyone, I'm Paolo Mecchiore, I'm the CEO of 20Tab and I'm a member of the Django Software Foundation. I use Django since a long time to do my web project and today we'll see together how to integrate a semantic search using Postgres and PG Vector. You, you'll find the, the slides I are sharing to you on my website, paulox.net. And for starting, we'll see the final results of our work today. This is the Django admin interface. As, as you can see, I just performed the search using a word and every results with different words, but uh, with uh, contextual meaning related. But to do that, I want to before I present a bit myself. I'm Paolo Vecchiore, a member of PSF, TSF and Python Italia Association. I'm Python Italia co-organizer and founder of Python Pescara Meetup. I'm also a Django contributor and coach of Django goals. I use Django for all my project and um, I know this is not a Django related uh, conference, but I want to introduce a bit this uh, web framework. Uh, Django was named after the Django Rainer guitarist, and uh, it's a web framework with a lot of history, but it's also very flexible and uh, I use it for all my projects. The motto of Django is the web framework for perfectionists with deadlines. And since its original creation and and the next uh, public release in 2005, a lot of feature was added. Most relevant for us is uh, Python 3 support, the addition of a specific Postgres module with a uh, specific feature, the ASCII support addition, and in 2022, the addition of Python 3 support. There are other Web framework you may know, you maybe already use it, like Flask is a Python web framework, very, very common and it's very easy to use. This is a code from the quick start of Flask. As you can see, with few lines of code, uh, you can instantiate Flask and declare a function to return um, HTML. There are another new Python web framework uh, that is very common and very uh, trending nowadays is FastAPI. In a very similar way as Flask, you can see we have able to um, declare a, an asynchronous function and return JSON in a RESTful output. I did an experiment with Django. I created this uh, micro Django demo in DjangoCon US 2023. As you can see, I used the same approach of the Django, the Flask and FastAPI Quick Start to declare an, uh, an endpoint to return an HTML uh, using Whiskey, a uh, Whiskey handler. In a similar way, using an Husky handler, I declared an asynchronous function that returned JSON response. I used Django to perform the same quick start as Flask and FastAPI, but it's only to demonstrate that it's very flexible and it's very convenient to use. And we're going to use Django in setting its project in a proper way using its, uh, its command. Before to start, I want to show you the code I am using to perform all the steps on this uh, workshop. And the first thing I did is uh, verify the Python version and uh, create a virtual uh, virtual environment and activate it. And inside it, I will install Django. After it, we can start creating our project, moving the, our project uh, directory and using the start project command. Uh, I named my project semantic search very originally. And you can see below hits or the file Django created for us with some settings, the uh, URL and asking a whiskey, a whiskey file. After that, we can enter the just created directory and start a new app, a 
decided to create uh, an items hub and Django created for us all the necessary uh, file for the models, the view, the tests, and also the admin. And now we can add this new created items in the settings in the list of the installed apps. The, the apps before are all from Django itself and they are usable to have the admin, the session, and other, other fundamental parts for our project. So after this initialization, we can start writing real code. In this case, I decided to create uh, um, an item, an example of an item, very simple, with a textual content, and I declared all the fields I needed below the in, inside the class. I decided to create a price integer with a default and uh, an stock boolean field with a true as default. Uh, I also declared a string representation for the, this item and with you know, returning the content and the text word content. After declaring the, our class, uh, uh, we need to apply all this new information to the database. To do that, uh, we can use the make migration command in Django and we can apply the migration to it with a similar command. To see what uh, Django is performing for us, we can use the last command and decide which migration file we want to, to show. And this is the SQL code that um, the Django ORM will create for us and apply in the blow uh, database. In this case, this is the SQL code that was created for the SQLite uh, database, which is the default for a Django project. Uh, after we create it, it. As you can see, we have uh, all the column for the field we declared before with the uh, its type and its default. And we have also a uh, primary key. It's a default uh, column Django create for us. Now we can perform some queries on this in this table. Uh, to do that, we, we have to enter the shell of Django and import the new created class. And with the filter uh, function, we can perform some lookup on different fields of the, the model. We are searching um, content in a in, uh, case insensitive mode, um, and we have we can perform a, a filter um, on the price and on a stock column. We have on a list of item representation, in this case only two uh, items that contain the, the string rock in the, its content, rock and rocket. And this is the SQL generated by the Django RAM on SQLite. It's a select all on the item table with the filter below related to the, the, the filter we just uh, did in the the query. But there is a way more convenient to query and interact with this new created class. And uh, as I show at the beginning of this, this presentation, it's the admin. The Django admin is a crude uh, interface to our database. Its purpose is for development and uh, uh, local usage. And it's, you can declare uh, an item and it can um, create your form and interface for you, but you can also declare some attributes. Like in this case, we decided to show some filter to search on some content and also to show the faceted or uh, its interface. To see this in action, we have to create a super user with the Django command in the command line, and we can start the local server uh, using the run server command. And this is it, the creation form for the item uh, item class. Uh, as you can see, we have uh, uh, the widget for all the field we declared, text area for the content, uh, number input for the price, and uh, 
checkbox for the Boolean is not. We can create through this form few um, few item just said it here and Django will start to show us the filter with phases the contents and it shows the uh, representation in a table like this with an input search over it and we can use now all this filter to perform a query on the on the Django admin we performed the same query as before we did in the terminal, uh, searching for um, for text of rock in this case, and we had the same results as before. Um, you can notice that we have a Django debug toolbar button on on the side, and if you click on it, you you will show what it's performed under the hood by the Django admin. Uh, here you can see the SQL representation. The timing and also uh, the query plan for the uh, that we just performed. It's very similar to what we saw on the terminal before, and it's very convenient to um, debug locally and to see what is not going well in, in your in your query in the admin. But now we want to start using a very specific Postgres feature, and to do that we have to install PsychoPG. This is the Twitter account of PsychoPG, and to install it, it's very simple. We can pick install the binary version of the of the module because it's very convenient uh, for developing purpose. After that, we have to update our setting file in the Django project to add a different engine, Postgres one, and we have to add. Uh, or the required uh, parameters uh, to connect with the database that can be local or remote or in Docker or similar one. Uh, using Postgres is the same as using SQLite. It can be more performant, but if you want to use a very specific feature of Postgres, we have to add the Postgres country module we cited at the beginning to use it, and we do that in the list of the installed apps. In this case, we came back in the shell. We tried to perform the same uh, case insensitive uh, um, search as did before, and using a plural word instead of a singular word. As you can see, in the query set is empty uh, because there is no word we created that it's, it contained the text rocks, but. In the second query, you can see we just performed a, um, a filter with the plural word and we had results. This is because the search lookup performed a full text search uh, using the uh, full text search of Postgres below. In fact, this is the SQL code of the uh, Django VRM generated from the search lookup. Uh, as you can see, uh, it use the plain to TS query on the input text and to TS vector to the uh, item content. This can be very slow because it's performed live, but we can also decide to create a vector in this case as it's generated and it's persisted on the database and this field converts directly the, the content field in a, in a vector for us. And after that, we can perform a full text search very, very easy. Um, same as before, we migrate, uh, created the migration and we can see the SQL code under the hood. We alter the table item and we add the column vector that is a TS vector generated and uh, it contained the, con the vector from the content. But we are here to perform a more advanced type of search, a semantic search, uh, that you can find different type of definition under here. Do we want to search for content and text that are not similar, but have the same contextual meaning of the term? To do that, we need an embedding system that transform our data in a vector embeddings. Uh, using other embedding models. The vector embeddings can have different type, uh, different dimension. In this case, uh, this a sample representation only three. 
uh, it's easy to think uh, to the vectors as a three dimensional vectors because especially we can see that the vector um, of our words or from example uh, can be more or less close to each other and we can also understand that using a cosine distance from this to these vectors we can find it very easily which one is more similar and so perform a semantic search on it to store all this vector usually is used uh, um, some vector database Codons is uh, very uh, very well known and it's open source it has pros and cons because it's very popular and there is a lot of resources and example online but on the on the cons you will require the a driver to use it and there can be synchronization issue this is a um, representation of the user interaction in a web project when the user perform a request on your web project and usually you interact with the vector database and then you go on the database to take all the relation data and it can it can be that in some time uh, the database and the vector database can not be synchronized each other to solve this problem if we already have postgres in our uh, stack we can use uh, PG vector. PG vector is an extension for Postgres, and to use it from Python, we can we have to install the PG vector Python module. Is in this in this case, with, and there is no dependencies. But to activate uh, at this point the PG vector extension in our Postgres uh, database, we have to create an empty migration. And we have to edit this file just created for us by Django and uh, add only this operation, the vector extension operation. Uh, we can apply this, uh, this migration and we can also see what he did under the hood in a very simple way. Uh, he created the extension uh, vector in the database. At this point, we can start using the vector field uh, to store all our embeddings. Uh, as you can see, we defined some dimension and we declared the not editable. Same as before, we create the integration and we apply it, but we are very curious, so we go to see the script code under the hood. It alters the table, it adds a column embedding with a specific dimension and not nullable. Now to transform our code, uh, our sorry, our text into vector, we need to access some model, and we can search in some uh, model system hub. In this case, we decided to use a sentence transformer. Um, you can install sentence transformer very easily from pip, and but it required a lot of dependencies. I removed from the the log here, because it's very long, it can uh, took you seconds or minutes to install, but at the end you will have all you need to uh, transform your content to, to embeddings. And finally, we can use it uh, on our project. As you can see, we imported the sentence transformer and we initiated uh, an instance of, of it, we decided in this case to use a multilingual model because it can use also Italian and other, other languages. And after the initialization with this very short uh, name variables, um, we are going to perform something you don't, you don't need to do very often, is override the save method of the models. It's a model you already have in your models because you um, you have you declared the, the, your you already created your classes starting with the models, and the only things we added here is to uh, use the encode method of our sentence transformer instance uh, to transform our self content and to assign the results the the vector results 
in our embedding field. That's it. But we already have uh, created some instance of items in the interface and to update them and to populate our uh, embedding uh, uh, column, we can perform this query on the Django shell. We have to import items and cycling over all the item instance, we perform a save that will use the, the code we saw before. Now that we have stored all of the embeddings in our instance, we have to perform a query on it. So we declare a class method, it's only to example purpose, and the attributes of this method is a query a text, and um, maximum distance, we decided to put a, a default years. Um, we are using the cosine distance function uh, from PG vector, and it performed this cosine distance on the abandings uh, column and on the encoded version of our query string. Uh, and it calculated the distance from these two vectors. It returned uh, our results using the distance uh, to query to filter the, the, or the items and also to order them by, by the distance. So we can see only uh, words that have uh, more than that have a distance specific and uh, starting with a more the closer one. We can see in action in our Django shell here. And uh, as before, we imported the item and we use the search method using the same word we used before. But in this case, we have results with a uh, word that are very different, but with the um, connection with the meaning is a similar meaning based on the context, like stone or rock or music. Under the hood, it performed this select query and uh, it used the specific syntax of PG vector to perform a cosine distance and to filter uh, distance under certain amount and uh, use also the same syntax in the order by uh, declaration here. But we want to use it directly in our web interface, in this case uh, only the Django admin interface. And to do that in a similar way as before, we have to override the default uh, method, is the get search result method. And if a term is inserted in the input text, we uh, chain the query um, and the other filter in the query set with the model search method we saw before. And it integrated both the filtering and uh, the search term, the semantic search in it. And we are back. We are in the first Django admin screenshot I took before. As you can see, we performed a search of our word creator and we have results with text very different from it, but with a contextual meaning connection with the original word. For this uh, demo and purpose, I only used a singular word, but you can put uh, in it uh, very long text, uh, um, books or what you want to perform a search over. And you can also use a regular web interface, not only the Django administration. But I use the Django on the because it's very easy and uh, fast to, to try to use a, a method and a function and perform query. query. And you can, from this point, uh, start using this code to create a different uh, project. You can use this code uh, in this presentation because it's Creative Commons licensed, and uh, you can we will find this presentation on my website, or and you can also find other um, articles or posts based on Postgres PG Vector and Semantic Search in my website or in my social 
accounts. Thanks again for having me. I hope you enjoyed this, this talk. Uh, see you next time. Bye.